focusing on how to homeschool for the first time should not include a lot of instructions on how to get the book out and how to teach <laughs> the lesson because it's overwhelmed, just like you right. said. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am glad that you have chosen to spend some of your time this week with us. This is part of our homeschool survival series. And if you've been tracking with us, you know that we are dissecting all of the fun things about homeschooling. And one of the things that we're doing is we had several weeks ago, Sonia Schaefer came on and she gave an overview of the five main teaching styles. We talked about Charlotte Mason, classical, unit studies, unschooling, and traditional. And so she talked about kind of what those things were, but then I promised you that we would dig deep into each one of those things. And so this week, we've got my good friend Sharon Fisher with us, and we're going to talk about traditional textbooks and what that looks like in your homeschool. I know tons and tons of homeschool families use traditional textbooks. And so for those who are trying to figure out what is best, what the best kind of teaching flavor is for your homeschool, we're going to answer those questions when it comes to traditional textbooks this week with Sharon. But before we get into that, I want to thank our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math curriculum, go to ctcmath.com. They will do all the teaching for you. You guys, it doesn't get better than that when it comes to math, unless you're one of those people who really enjoys teaching math, which I know you're out there. I know because one of my very best friends in the entire universe loves math. Crystal Coleman. I don't understand how, I don't understand why, but she loves it and I do not. But for those of you who are more on the side that I am and you don't love math, go to ctcmath.com because Crystal's not going to come and teach math to your kids for you. Though she would, because she's a really kind person. So anyway, thank you to CTC Math for sponsoring this episode. Um, Sharon, welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. It's been a little while since you've been on with me and I'm so excited to have you back to talk about tr traditional textbooks. I'm so glad we get to talk about anything homeschool related. So thanks yeah. for asking. Yeah, of course. It's so funny when, you know, we were just praying through who we would have to talk on each of these subjects. You, you were the one who you're kind of the master of textbooks, <laughs> <I> <laughs> or at you. least you can answer most of the questions about it. So, um, so we're going to kind of do some myth busting today. And as, as most of us have grown up in the traditional school system, most of us have therefore grown up with a traditional textbook for our schooling. And so we're, it's probably the one style that we are most familiar with. But just because we're familiar with being taught through a textbook doesn't necessarily mean that we are comfortable teaching through a textbook, especially if you're one who didn't go to teacher school you know, you didn't get that degree as a teacher and, and you really don't know how to do this. I mean, that's definitely the camp that I was in when I started homeschooling and I got my first, you, you know, you go into this and you're like, okay, I'm going to get all the greatest curriculum. And so I, I went to homeschool convention, got the things that some of my friends were using, looked through some of the curriculum and brought it at home. And I was like, uh, I don't know what to do. And there were pages of instructions and it was super overwhelming for me. And so Oftentimes what I have found myself doing throughout the years is I will get overwhelmed because I simply just don't know what to do with it. And then I just toss it to the side and I don't ever pick it up again. Or maybe I'll pick it up a couple of years later, revisit it or have someone else help me understand it. And then it's, it's a game changer. So this is going to be the game changer for those who really enjoy using a traditional textbook. So Sharon, talk to us a little bit about what, what a traditional textbook is and how that can be used in our homeschooling. Well, a textbook, as you mentioned, is something that you would find typically in a school. Uh, could be a public school or a Christian school. Um, we like materials used in Christian schools uh, because they are written typically with a biblical worldview. Right. Um, and so this is something that, you know, if you're gonna pull out a math book in a, in a school setting, that's the kind of book you would use. So the student would have a book that would have problems in it, problems to solve, some interesting information, uh, some charts and things like that, uh, skills that they're going to work on. But then there's usually a teacher's edition uh, and a teacher's edition explains how to teach the lesson, what the goals are for that lesson, the parts and pieces that you're going to need to teach the lesson um, and some background information, all that sort of thing. So there's going to be some type of a teacher guide 
uh, mm -hmm. something for the student to use. And then sometimes kids will use um, a notebook or an activity book, something that they're going to write in and uh, oftentimes tests. And that really is up to the parent whether or not they want to use tests. But those are usually the things that are available to a parent looking for textbook led um, education. Right, right. So let's talk about some of the pros then. What are some of the pros of using a textbook? Well, a lot of the, the encouragement is, especially for brand new homeschoolers, um, they'll ask, you know, how do we homeschool? And so, mm -hmm. you know, focusing on how to homeschool for the first time should not include a lot of instructions on how to get the book out and how to teach <laughs> the lesson because it's overwhelmed, just like you right. said. And so uh, there are people to do that and that comes a little later, but initially it's, it's a matter of understanding what homeschooling is, how mm -hmm. you think you'd like to teach it, what a year might look like, you know, depending on your state. Uh, for us in South Carolina, it's 180 days. So I'm looking for materials that have 180 days of lessons. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're looking for your state, you want to look for the things in curriculum that meet your state requirements. So some states require that you have a history of your state mm -hmm. um, in, in the history part of your materials. And so you probably want to hunt for that or see if it's covered. And so you might use a curriculum that has everything, or you may use several different types of textbooks, mm -hmm. or you might use a textbook and add some extra things to it. So there's a lot of freedom there. So I think initially for someone who's looking for the first time, um, if you're looking for all the materials and all the things you need, a, a textbook company is going to pretty much have all of that. Now, there are some textbook companies that teach, you know, just one subject. So you might go to the vendor hall and find something that's just for English or something uh -huh. just for history. And they have the complete set of everything that you would need to teach for history or for English. Um, there are companies like ours that have everything from K3 through 12th grade mm -hmm. with all the subjects. And so um, really just thinking through, could I teach through a teacher's edition? What would I need to do it? Um, and then how can somebody help me understand yeah. how to use this? That's really the main thing. And so if you can get through those decisions, um, it's a great idea to start with textbooks because it's all written out for you. There's a teacher's mm -hmm. edition that tells you everything. It's almost like a cookbook, not so much right. that you can't think for yourself, but sure. everything's there and you can tweak it the way you want to. So that's a big benefit is that it's all there for you. All you have to do is tweak it and make it work for you. Yeah. One of the things that I really love most about, um, and, and I've only ever worked with Christian curriculum, uh, publishers is that all of them that I'm familiar with, um, that we've worked with at least have a really great customer service department, even if it's a small customer service department where you can call them and just say, Hey, can you help walk me through this particular, you know, book, help me explain it to me or help me figure out what book is the best one for us to use, what textbook is the best for us to use. And they will walk you through step-by-step what's best for you and your family. Whereas if you do an overview of like, you know, unit studies or Charlotte Mason or something like that, though, I mean, there are tons of great resources for those as well, which we've talked about. Um, but you, there's not usually a, a you know, a, a curriculum hotline that you can call and say, Hey, walk me through these specific texts and a traditional textbook companies for the most part have that available to people. And so I think that's something that's really, really helpful. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts. And we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Sharon Fisher, and we're talking about traditional textbooks. And we were talking about some of the pros of them. And I was before the break talking about how it, one of the great things is that you, you can usually get to a consultant for whatever textbook company you're looking to use, you can find a consultant and they will help walk you through it. What are some of the other pros of using a traditional textbook? Well, one thing I think most parents um, 
enjoy is that they're familiar with this kind of learning already, mm -hmm. uh, unless they were homeschooled. Um, and even then, depending on the curriculum they were used, most parents are used to having a textbook. They're used right. to the idea of the teacher teaches from something mm -hmm. and the student learns and practices in something. And so this is very comforting, especially to a new homeschooler, because this is something that is familiar with everything being unfamiliar um, for homeschooling, you know, what grade is my child in and what do I do? Are there co-ops? Um, this is a familiar thing. So, okay, I know my child is, is able to do third grade math. So let's see what you have in the, you know, in the curriculum and you kind of page through it. You go, oh yes, yeah. a lot of parents will look through it and go, oh yeah, that's right. I see that. I recognize that. Uh, and there's mm -hmm. comfort in that. So that's definitely one thing for parents is that they feel uh, the comfort that they can use it to some degree. They'll still need help and encouragement, but they have that least familiarity. Uh, the other thing is that the material is written by experts. These are people who know um, what they're writing. They're looking at state standards and national standards. They're looking at what needs to be covered um, in seventh grade literature. And so for a parent who's like, I have no idea what to teach my child. <laughs> right. Yeah. Seventh grade literature, you don't need to worry about it. The scope and sequence has already been decided right. by people who um, are regularly updating, by the way, to make sure that your child is prepared. So when you graduate your child, um, you know, by 12th grade and you've used, you know, mostly or some or all, whatever you've used, you have the confidence to know they're prepared. I gave them all the things that they needed. Um, and I can pick and choose from the curriculum to make sure that this is what I think they need. So everything's there that's need, needful for you. Also, it's age appropriate. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people are afraid of, you know, is this too advanced for my child or my child is already, you know, far along. He's already learned his times tables. Can we do something else? Well, you can take the materials and see what's coming in the years ahead mm -hmm. and make those work for you. So that's helpful as well. The other thing is that you can measure to some degree um, how your child is doing against his peers. And that would be your oh, standardized yeah. testing. And I know that sometimes that's a concern for parents. You know, testing doesn't show everything a yeah. child knows, obviously. Um, but it does give you a little bit of a gauge mm -hmm. so that maybe, you know, last year your child came from public school or from another school and you see that there was really um, a lapse in something there. There's a gap. And so you're working on that and you're working... Um, on that particular concept and you have all the things you need to do that and then you take a test and you say oh look we've come ahead a grade and a half from where we were we've we've made progress here or you know i see we've made progress here but we really need to work on your comprehension skills so that makes it measurable which is easy and it's also an easy transition to homeschooling and yeah. also back to school and sometimes even though we don't want our kids to not be homeschooled. There are times where that could happen. And for a lot of people who are new to homeschooling, that's a concern. I don't know how much, you know, I'm going to do this. It's a year by year. You know, you've heard that before. Sure. I'm only going to try this for one year and then I might. Put <laughs> my we always back. encourage them to stick with it. That's right. We might <laughs> don't put, put it back in school, especially public. <laughs> right. We're like, don't, don't go there. But, it, yeah. but there are thoughts of that. Like if sure. I can't do this, then at least I know. Right. I've covered it. And we're like, well, you can cover it and we'll help you to homeschool so that you don't have to do that. But there is that assurance for parents that, okay, things were covered. They're where they need to be uh, as far as that goes. And then of course, because you have the tests and you have all the things, record keeping is really up to you. How many tests you want to give, how often mm -hmm. you want to give them, but everything's provided for you. So as one of our consultants says, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Everything's there. Yeah. I just pick what I want. And so I think for a parent to know, hey, it's like a buffet. I can just pick what I want. I can trust this um, right. and I can go with it and run with it and then go from there and use it year after year or tweak it, you know, to right. make it work for you. Yeah. So, so a textbook is about the easiest grab and go kind of curriculum that you can have. Um, it, it, how much, as, as you're looking and talking to parents and stuff, and I guess it would depend somewhat on the grade and age of the child, how much parent involvement is required typically with a textbook? There's a lot of parent involvement. Um, so if you really want to spend some quality time with your children, 
<laughs> yeah. This is the way to do that. Now it really depends again on your, your, the age of your children, mm -hmm. um, teaching them skills to work independently. It also depends on whether or not you want to use video courses. Um, and video courses are often taught for you mm -hmm. using the textbooks, uh, as the guide. And so yeah. a video course that's taught by a, a teacher using the textbooks will be using all the same stuff, but you as a parent can facilitate. And so, you know, for a new homeschooler or somebody who's got really young kids, a lot of the parents want to, I want to teach my child to read, or yeah. I want to be able to be the first one to teach my kids how to do these things. And then when two or three come along and you've got a toddler and a baby and math is getting a little more complicated, it becomes, it becomes pretty heavy duty for a parent. So for example, if you have four kids, I have four kids, and there's eight subjects to teach. That's 32 preps right. a, a day. Um, nobody has time for 32 right. preps a day. So right. at that point, then obviously you need to think about combining right. things or whatever you want to do. So you can be very involved or mm -hmm. you can choose to get help by getting some advice on how to combine courses or how to yep. use video courses, which is my favorite. Yes, and we will talk about video courses, but I'm glad you touched on that because that's something I wanted to ask you about as far as combining courses is how easy is it to use a textbook when you've got multiple ages um, and, and different grades? How well does that work with a textbook? It works, uh, but it's, it's tricky to be truthful. Now, it depends on how close in age your kids are. So mm -hmm. I had two children that were 13 months apart. I could easily yeah. um, have homeschooled the two of them in some subjects. However, mm -hmm. one would have been ahead of the other in math and, or science or whatever, and the other I would have done together. So, right. and even then, because I came from a teaching background, I would want to have done all the stuff, which I would have burnt out very quickly. So, you know, my advice is if you're going to teach it yourself, um, don't think about doing all this. <laughs> right. This is, this is, this is not what it's meant to be. It, so even just looking at it or having two kids that are maybe within two years of each other, you can certainly do history and science together. You can buy a second book or a second workbook. You can choose not to test. You can just do it for exposure. Mm -hmm. But every child probably needs his own math lesson and probably needs his right. own reading lesson in the younger years. Sure. But when you get into the middle school and high school, there are some things that they're learning independently and you don't have right. to sit there and read it to them. At that point, they can read for themselves and you're kind of there to guide. So it really yeah. depends on your children. It depends on your confidence in, in homeschooling. But it is it is definitely some work. The more kids you have and the sure. older they get. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we are out of time for today. We're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to keep talking about traditional textbooks. And on Thursday, we're, Sharon's going to actually walk us through a textbook and how to use it. So um, stay tuned for that. We are so grateful that you are spending your time with us this week, though. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who continue to send us messages and just let us know what a blessing this podcast is. I'm telling you, Without those messages, we would have no idea. It, we, we don't get a list of anybody who listens to the podcast or, I mean, we get to see how many downloads and stuff there are, but you know, it's, it's always hard to know, like, is it really impacting people? And when we get messages from you guys, just telling us how this podcast is impacting you, it blesses us beyond belief. Um, and it's what keeps us going. You know, this ministry is so special and important to our family and it's what God has called us to. And we love doing what we do. We, last night we were having our uh, just family Bible time and we were praying for you, for our listeners and just so grateful that you guys spend your time with us. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I know that there are hundreds or thousands actually of other podcasts that you can be listening to. So we appreciate that you've taken time to listen to this one. Um, if this is a blessing to you and you've not yet left a review for this podcast, we would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and leave a review. That really does help other people to hear about the podcast. So um, thank you again, Sharon, so much for joining me today. We'll be back on Wednesday. We're going to continue talking about textbooks and how you can use them in your homeschool and see if that's what the best fit is for your family. Maybe it's just for a few subjects. Maybe it's for all of them, uh, but we'll be back on Wednesday. We'll see you then. Bye. We can't just give them beliefs and say, believe it because I told you to, sure. because the moment they hit 12 or 13, they're going to say, why? And if the parent doesn't come up with a good answer, that child is lost and can be lost for a long time. One of the things that we as parents need to understand 
is that Christianity is not just adding God to our thinking. To, to train kids up to have a true Christian worldview, we've got to understand that the Bible is a revelation from God and it's a history book that reveals to us what we need to know to build our thinking, to have a truly Christian worldview in every area. And many people don't realize that there's ultimately only two starting points, only two foundations, God's Word and man's word.